watching the mug stops here and i'm barkha dat on the program this evening a story that's creating reverberations around the world we're crossing over to across the border tonight for what's being dubbed as pakistan's memo gate it's a story that could have an impact in india as well in fact india and 2611 find a direct reference in that controversial memo one that points to a meltdown between pakistan's army and the zardari government the turmoil in pakistan could have an impact on the entire region and that's our big story tonight the defining image the world is watching to see what will happen next in pakistan's memo gate this after an american businessman mansoor ijaz claimed that pakistan's ambassador to the united states of america hussein hakani had asked washington to intervene right after osama bin laden was killed to prevent an army coup all kinds of promises in this memo were made including handing over the 2611 perpetrators to india and shutting down one crucial department of the isi on the program today that will be our special focus we'll have special guests from delhi from pakistan as well as from washington as we look at the ramifications of this big international story that's what we'll be debating on the buck stops here this evening pakistan's memo gate clearly pointing to a war within pointing to friction between pakistan's army and the zardari government we'll be joined by a special newsmaker mansoor ijaz he's the man who's at the center of memo gate in fact he's the memo man the man who says i was only a typist but actually outed hussein hakani as the man he says asked washington for help to stop an army coup on the program today you can take part in our debate as always our web page ndtv.com/buckstops here is open now for your comments so keep them coming and of course like every night you can tweet me as well we'll run the best tweets through the length of the next 60 minutes as we take a close look at this big international story one for implications in the subcontinent my twitter handles at pida all right let's get started now with our special focus on mansoor ijaz and pakistan's memo gate earlier we spoke exclusively to a man about whom not very much is known and depending on who you speak to you get a different opinion he calls himself an american businessman he's somebody who's had an india connection 10 years ago as well and now he's somebody who writing in the financial times literally opened what many in pakistan are calling a can of worms others have described him to be a fantasist one who simply made up what's come to be known as pakistan's memo gate our newsmaker tonight somebody we spoke exclusively to over the weekend mansoor ijaz let me start with the basic question you've seen the denials by ambassador hussein hakani do you still stick to your claim that it was indeed him who asked you to draft and deliver this memo Well, Burke, it's first of all it's good to be with you after so many years. Um I will tell you very simply there's no matter here of claims or counterclaims. Um Hussein Hakani is lying. It's just as simple as that. The data, the facts, the absolute um hard evidence if I may put it that way, the electronic evidence, the emails, the BlackBerry messages, the uh telephone call records all show very clearly that Ambassador Hakani was the architect of this entire process. Uh and I think that the international media has two very grave responsibilities in this matter. One is to ask what is the 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 Pakistani government trying to cover up? Why? And what are they hiding basically? Mansoor Ijaz the question has been raised in Pakistan and in Pakistani media as to why uh, uh, someone who was pretty well connected like Hussein Hakani he knew uh, everybody on Capitol Hill would need you to pass on a message to the American administration. Yeah. So you can imagine that these were the very tense days after Osama bin Laden had been killed on Pakistani soil in an American raid, a unilateral American raid. You can imagine that uh, there were stresses in the system at that time that none of us outside at least could fathom. We don't know what conversations were taking place between General Kayani, General Pasha, uh Pr- President Asif Zardari, the Prime Minister and so, and so forth. And when Hakani reached out to me, I had not spoken to him for months uh, prior to in fact, the last interaction that Hakani and I had had was when he spoke at one of my charitable fundraisers in New York. And since that time we had not spoken at all. We had had one or two what I would call friendly type uh, BlackBerry exchanges. 
And when he reached out to me on that day, he was here in London as well. Um, and his first, uh, shall we say, initial stanza in the, in the conversation we had was, I'm coming to you because you are a plausibly deniable channel for us. If in these days, I'm not talking about May 9th, 10th, 11th, prior to the meeting with Admiral Mullen taking place in the United States, if in these days, God forbid, this information gets public or gets known somehow or the other, that the civilian government is trying to go around the ISI and the Army to uh, prevent uh, their pressure from getting too high. NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone, faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free, ndtv.com slash apps.